I want to talk about rivalrousness and anti-rivalrousness. During this time period, it is imperative that we focus on anti-rivalrous and non-rivalrous solutions because they're what is going to get us through. But our entire society and our personal selves are conditioned to create rivalrous solutions, ones where I win and you lose or you win and I lose. And those aren't going to get us through. And so I'm going to go through a few categories and what a rivalrous solution would look like versus a non-rivalrous solution in this time or an anti-rivalrous solution. An anti-rivalrous rivalrous solution, I wish there was a better name, um, is a solution that the more people are involved in it, the better it is as opposed to win-lose. It's when more people come, the more we all win and it, it grows exponentially, which you're all going to be learning some exponential math over the next few weeks and months that is horrific and this will be um, some exponential good news as more people join and we have more capacity to do more and more good in this world. So food, food under the rival risk category looks very much like hoarding. It's what we're currently doing, looking out for your own, making sure you have enough food to come through, not just the two weeks or months quarantine, but also the possible impending food crisis that's coming down the line. Of course, there's a lot of issues with that. There's not enough for everyone. Then people who don't have a lot of money go to the stores and there's enough food. But more than that, when it, you think about down the line, even if you have a stockpile of food, if other people are hungry and other people are starving, there's gonna be violence. And so what does an anti-rivalrous solution look like for food? It looks like us coordinating now, looking what happens six months, a year down the road. How do we get labor to the farms to get the, the food out of the field? How do we do guerrilla gardening now? How are we using every city boulevard, every green space to be growing food for the masses? How do we coordinate the time? How do we, how do we deal with, with those things? Those are non-rivalrous, anti-rivalrous solutions. We need to feed our cities and we need to do so, especially in Canada with the under, with the, hypothesis that the states will not be sending food to us. We will not be buying food from them as they go through their own their own issues. We have to grow enough for ourselves. What does finances look like in a rivalrous situation is looking for opportunities to get rich right now. And even, and none of these rivalrous ones are necessarily bad in and of themselves. This is what we're used to. But at the same time, if what you're looking for is how to feed your family, how to keep rent and your mortgage paid at, it's always been at the expense of others, but now even more so we're in this together. And so what does finance look like in a anti-rivalrous situation? It's knowing we're in this together, knowing that if you can't pay your mortgage and you can't pay your rent, neither can anyone else. And we can find solutions that work. We can go on rent and mortgage strike. We can have a debt jubilee. We can make sure everyone is taken care of, or we can pressure our governments to pass UBI and have a rent and mortgage freeze. But to focus on that we are in it together and we have power together. Um, the virus itself, thinking about me, 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 me. I'm in the young category, I can, I can survive this, no problem, or this is really inconvenient, I'm not getting to go to all of my, my traveling expenses. Again, totally valid. You get to have your emotions, you get to, to do grieve what you thought the world was and what the world was, was coming in, in, what your life looked like in the coming weeks and months. And people are going through real life events right now. People are still having cancer and still having to deal with that. People are giving birth. People are, are losing loved ones to this virus and other things and not being able to hold funerals, not being able to have birthday parties. There are real things happening right now that are absolutely valid. But the more we focus on how is this impacting me and poor me, the less we're going to be able to focus on the anti-rivalrous side, which is how do we get through this virus, the actual biological enemy. And it's with crowdsourcing. How do we how do we help our frontline workers, both within the metal community and, and the bigger surrounding community, right? Our grocery store workers, the gas station attendants. How can we make sure that their lives are easier? And I think it's by asking what would make your life easier. A lot of the solutions aren't necessarily gonna be there. I don't know, can we go in and clean our nurses and doctors' houses without further risking ourselves? Uh, yes, there are people who this is a lower risk for and people who have already had it, but they could be going in and doing those things. We can be making food for them, doing it in a safe way, doing their grocery shopping for them, anything that's going to make their life easier because they're concentrated 24-7 on community health. How do we help them run their families and their households and reduce their stress to the lowest possible that it's going to 
that it's possible to be under these very high stress situations. How do we open crowdsourced science so that we can share information as as laymen as people who are just you know maybe you don't understand science how do we understand it? how do we get information we can trust and use and not all of the vi other viral <laughs> technologically viral messages that are going around that are fake and wrong and are just not trustworthy and how do we know what is trustworthy and then how do we create a system for the experts to, to coordinate so that they, we can get a vaccine sooner, so that we can get treatment options, so that not just for this pandemic, but for anyone that's coming down the pipeline, how can we get the experts to coordinate so it's not for the normal profit rivalrous situation of I want to be the one who decide, discovers this so that, so that I can make the money or I can have the prestige, and instead, how do we get this done the fastest? How do we get the best information to the most people? Then how do we ramp up the production of vaccines? How do we ramp up the production of masks and productive equipment right now and testing gear we there is so much to do and while our medical team the people are concentrating on the on the, the virus itself other ones of us can concentrate where our energy is needed on the food production on mental health on how we emerge into a world that is beautiful and abundant a world we want to live in this virus is showing us how interconnected we are how it doesn't just impact me because I feel sad that my neighbor's poor, it actually affects my real life. They're gonna be more likely to go out and spread the virus because they have to work. They're gonna be more likely to go out and spread the virus because they can't afford medical, um, they can't afford to go to their doctor. That's not here in Canada, but definitely in the United States. The people who don't have money have to make different decisions, even if they're not in your best interest. The people who are scared and not trusting in the media cost us all, and the media has been a big, reason that happens they've been crying wolf for years over every little thing blowing everything out of proportion that now that there's something that we actually need them to trust and listen to they and they're they don't they're in fear and so we need to be able to create the systems that help everyone and ask if you're not doing what we what you're what we want you to do i.e staying inside why aren't you what would help you do that and Create the systems to actually help them do it. How do we help you maintain quarantine? How do we help you have social distancing without it drastically impacting your finances and your mental health? And it's by finding out how we do this together, how we come up with anti-rivalrous solutions to the coming weeks and months and years.